Hey y'all, my name is Cassie and I am the creator of Pieces of Scrap and in today's video I need to get ready for my next market. I haven't yet priced new inventory and I've got a huge tote of it um, upstairs in my office that is almost overflowing with how much inventory that needs to be priced is in it. Um, and I also have to take inventory of my plushies because my last market, which was in February, I didn't take inventory afterwards. So that's quite a lofty task for today and I really need to get that stuff done before I leave for my work trips because by the time I get home, I'm probably not gonna wanna do it. That takes a lot of time. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today and then later I might show you some of the patterns that I finished testing in March.
Hey guys, so I need to do inventory today and I also have to price this entire bin. It's like almost overflowing. Um, plus I have another bin of stuff that I'm working on for a pattern test video or pattern review video, excuse me. So I have all this to price. I'm not going to price the stuff that needs to be recorded for the review video, but I do have to check my inventory because I never checked it after my last market. So I got to make sure everything lines up and there weren't any losses. There shouldn't have been. Um, but yeah, and then also I wanted to show you guys, I finally got this thing out and I was messing with it. I, um, I had to start a new notebook for like my notes and scripts and stuff for these videos. And so I did like a little rec recording of me drawing on the cover to like kind of customize it so that it's cool. Um, anyway, this was really, really helpful in doing that. So it kind of comes apart like this and you put it around your neck and it's super comfortable. And then I have, luckily I have a second phone case because this is a magnet. There's no like, um, the tripod that my phone's in right now kind of like just pinches it and holds it in place. But this one um, has a magnet on it. So I have my old phone case rigged up for this. I had to kind of sand down the back a little bit because the reason I got a new phone case was this one was peeling a lot, like the out outside layer of this case. I'm not sure what it is. Um, so I sanded it down and then I had to super glue the magnet on because the first time I took the magnet off, off of the um, phone, it like tore the magnet off the phone case. So I had to super glue it on. But anyway, this thing is super adjustable and really cool. I look really funny when I'm wearing it, but that's just a behind the scenes thing, I guess. But anyway, I'm going to put my phone in here and record myself as I'm pricing and taking an inventory, and that should be a pretty cool time lapse, I think. Hey guys, so I ended up doing inventory a little differently today. I ended up writing down for each page of my inventory. I marked what bin it was in and I also just went about it really differently as well. So I started by, because my inventory was so disorganized, um, just moving my bins around and the things that were in the bins so that I had different price ranges inside each bin. So my first bin, was the pink bin and as you can see it filled up an entire page. This is probably 
um, the bin that has the most amount of plushies in it because it's all the small little $8 ones, $6 ones, and $10 ones. You can probably tell I'm really excited to set up my like $8 section like I did at my last market because that did really well. People were flocking to it to try to pick out the plushie that they wanted. So I have a lot more here than I did before and I will probably have to make a bigger section for that $8 section, which I'm pretty sure people will be really excited about as well. Um, so yeah, I ended up putting all of my $8 stuff, $10 stuff, $6 stuff into the same bin. That way when I'm at my markets and I'm trying to set up quickly, I can just pick the bin that I am looking for that has all the things that I'm looking for to make that little $8 or $10 section and then just put those things out without having to dig through things to try to find where I put something. My next page is the second bin. This had um, things under $30 in it. So we started with um, my mix and match turtles, gnomes, mushroom boys, stuff like that. All of that is in here and then it starts getting to like one-off things that won't have a um, section of the store that says, oh hey, this is all this price or whatever, because most of the things in this bin aren't um, the same price. So we have a lot of different price ranges and different price tags on the plushies in this bin and you start getting into the bigger plushies as well. So we start off smaller and we get into the bigger ones and that just happens naturally with increasing the price of your plushies as well. And then on this page we've got two bins actually. So we've got my black bin and this had all my biggest and most expensive plushies in it. And then the last bin, which is gray bin number one, um, has just my chickens in it. And then I found a giraffe that I missed that I should have put into the second bin that I packed. Um, so that one ended up in this one as well. But this is really awesome for keeping track of where things are for my inventory. So if something somebody orders something from me, from Etsy and my husband has to try to find it while I'm gone, I will have all this for him to kind of try to dig it out and find that for me. Hey guys, so I was showing you my new neck uh, camera holder earlier before I was pricing inventory and I wanted to show you what I was working on before. I did a time lapse of me making this cute cover for my new journal for all of my scripting, my notes, pattern notes, stuff like that. Um, I am nearly through this one, um, so it was about time to get started on a new one. I think on this one I only have like three pages left, which is not enough for what I need to do. I keep kind of meticulous notes about, um, you know, the patterns I test and review, and I keep notes on like how many ounces of pattern uh, takes of yarn and uh, the time that it takes to make a pattern so that I can price them accurately. And so all of that is in here as well as like um, patterns that I have been working on. Like I write down notes as I make a pattern to um, keep track of how I made a pattern. And then there's like inventory from a long time ago in here and um, like to-do lists and stuff like that. So that's gonna become this one as well. This one is just gonna carry on through that. So it lasted me six months. So hopefully this one lasts me six months or more. Um, being with how often I'm testing patterns nowadays, like reviewing patterns for videos and um, making my own patterns and keeping track of like, those numbers I was telling you before, like the ounces of yarn and the amount of time I spend on making new patterns, it, it, it's likely that this might be like a four month or or uh, less than six month anyway um, notebook, unfortunately, just because of how many notes I've been taking to make my life easier. So be that as it may, I'm just really excited that I was able to draw my own cover for this and you've got like little yarn balls and then like flowers and wildflowers on the cover of this thing and it's just so cute. It's it's a very springy summery and I'm excited to put my notes in this one. Anyway, before we close out today's video, I wanted to show you guys the patterns that I tested for tester calls in March. So first up, we have Noodles the Snake by Crochet by Georgians. Um, I think that's how you say it. 
She put this pattern out on her Etsy and not only does it come with the temperature snake mod, but if you have a Cricut, um, she has a template to make your own key so you can know what color yarn for what temperatures. So yeah, that's all really helpful and I'm very grateful for her to pick me to test this pattern for her. I also got chosen to test the T-Rex out of the Dino Friends package from Ly Lyra Loon Softies and it's a uh, pattern pack of four patterns. So there's a T-Rex, there's a Triceratops, a Stegosaur, and then there is a Plesiosaur, which is a swimming dinosaur. But anyway, I have only tested this one. The rest of them were assigned to other people, so I hadn't tested those yet, but I do have the whole pattern pack, so later in the future, hopefully I'll get to try out those other guys. But this T-Rex is completely no so. He's really cute, works up in about 30 minutes, I believe. So he was a very fast make and I'm really happy to have been able to test this for her. So uh, if you're interested in getting this pattern for yourself, you can get it on her Etsy as well. And then finally, my last pattern that I tested in March was the No Sew Fox by Nooks Hooks. And I love Nooks Hooks patterns. I love her patterns so much because they're all like big stuffies like this and they are mostly all no sew. So I tested her gardener bear, or excuse me, I tested her garden bear pack in February and I was chosen to do the gardener bear. So I made a gardener bear and bunny, if you remember that. Um, they were super cute. Definitely my favorite bear pattern ever. And this kind of plays off of that same pattern. There's some different um, techniques done in the face to achieve that kind of like fox um, furry face kind of thing and there's color changes and the big tail is just amazing. I love this tail so much and it kind of acts as a kickstand as well so when he stands up he doesn't fall over. That's always a plus. If you watched my last video I was showing off my birthday gifts and one of them were these cute little eyes. I put some green safety eyes in there so he's got these cute little green uh, shiny glistening eyes and I think it was a really nice touch to kind of pull it all together. And then if you also watched that video you saw that I got this Cajun Spice uh, yarn bee um, cozy traditions yarn and I just absolutely love the texture that it adds to this guy. He's so cool looking. He just looks like a really rustic fox and I love him so much. So Anouk, thank you so much for letting me test one of your patterns again. You do not disappoint ever. <laughs> They're always amazing. So thank you so much. So yeah, that's all for today's video. It might have been a shorter one just because there's not really a lot going on, but I wanted to share with you what was what I've been working on back here and you know it was kind of like a more chill vlog today because we're just doing time lapses and fun stuff and just doing a like crochet with me type thing which I, I'm sure a lot of people enjoy. I especially enjoy doing that myself putting on one of uh, refined vibes video where she does she does this so many time lapses of what she's doing and it's just nice to like feel very low pressure about what's going on and just being able to like look down and crochet the whole time and not really having to pay attention to every second in a video so kudos to refined vibes for doing those nice time lapses and I'm hoping that mine aren't very boring or anything like that I'm hoping that mine are just as entertaining as hers and just as chill and nice to crochet along with as well so anyway, if you guys like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like this video and you, it also lets YouTube know that you should recommend it to other people. YouTube rewards pe um, creators for getting content um, engagement. So if you like or comment or subscribe, ring the bell, anything like that, it recommends my videos and my channel to more people. So if you want to see my channel continue to grow and expand and you want more people to get in contact with me and, you know, watch my videos, make sure you interact with this video in some way. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and tune in next week for another video. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye!